I've dreamed that I could read a book in a hammock rather than mowing my grass. I've tweaked the settings on this new robot mower and it can mow the front and backyard and return to the base without having to go rescue it. This is the Luba 2 and its makers claim to have solved one of the biggest issues plaguing these high-tech mowers that use satellites for their positioning. And the problem is this, is that when the robot is in a position where it cannot see the satellites, say there's trees on this side and maybe a house on the other, sometimes it just gives up. And then you have to go spend time rescuing the thing that's supposed to save you time. So this guy's been great and saved me lots of time this past year, but it was often a low percentage chance that it could make it through an area like this. The Luba 2 was sent to me for review. Everything is my own opinion. So here are my thoughts and my experiments on what this mower is capable of. So the first thing I want to say is that if I had made this review when I first got the mower, I wouldn't be that happy. I was excited about the new vision system where I didn't have to go rescue a stuck mower, but when I first started using it, it would run into things, it would stop, it would dive into a bush, and each time I'd have to go rescue it, and it was frustrating because I thought this wasn't supposed to happen when there was a loss of satellite signal. But the Luba 2's maker heard the feedback and over about two months kept pumping out firmware updates, and at least for me, it fixed issue after issue such that I almost never have to go rescue it unless it's dark out, but I'll get to that later. This mower uses satellites and something called RTK, real-time kinematics for positioning. So you need two points for triangulation. One is the mower itself and the other is the RTK base station. And with this, you can get centimeter level accuracy, but you need to make sure that your base station is in a place with a clear view of the sky. You can even get an extra mount so you can attach the base station higher up to get the best signal. The biggest upgrade for the Luba 2 is this thing on top. It's a two camera vision system. So when it has low signal where it can't triangulate its position, it can stay where it's supposed to go. And I'll show you an experiment of that. And this thing is also really cool because you can watch out of this camera at any time on the app to see where it's at or what's happening in front of it. So here's a sped up example of what it looks like when it's going from the backyard all the way up to the front yard. This mower is what I would call a maintainer mower. The blades underneath are on two discs and they're basically glorified razor blades. And I think it actually does a very good job at cutting, though if the grass is too high, you might need to send it out a few times. And once the grass is fairly even, you can have it mow at the same height every time and get the lawn stripes or checkerboard pattern angles that you want. To get started, you have to train the outline of the mowing zones that you want. And I found that it sticks very closely to the spots that I've trained it at. For example, this area right here is not mowed. And I remember training the mower because I was concerned not to get too close to the concrete walkway. And every time that it mows now, it goes to the exact same spot that I trained it in. For getting back to the base for recharging, it backs into place. Now, I've not had any issues with it missing the base. It seems to nail it every time. But one thing I was concerned about was the grass in front of the base getting torn up from those zero degree turns before it backs up. So far, there's a small but noticeable area where the grass has been worn away. And my guess is that this is made worse when the ground is wet. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and I might relocate the base so that these turns happen in a less noticeable area or where there's a hard surface underneath. This top here on the base is called the garage roof. It's an extra thing you can get, but the mower itself and all the hardware are made water resistant so I can stay outside without this garage roof. Now let's talk about safety and how it interacts with objects. It's going to be very difficult for you to get a hand or other body part accidentally underneath the Luba 2. The whole thing is low to the ground and has a few plastic guards before you could even get to the blades. For obstacle avoidance tests, there's a number of things I could do, but I'm really just gonna test two things, sort of a bigger object, this baby doll, and a smaller object, this little piece of foam. For this test, I have it set on less touch, which is number three, which is one down from the most conservative. This is where the robot will slow down and bypass the obstacle, and it will use the front bumper if it needs to. Okay, so it was right there, it went around the baby doll. Uh, now let's test the piece of foam. It detected the piece of foam. Oh, it even cut out the motor. So it's going to go around it. All right, so, so far the tests have been going good. Let me try this plastic squirt gun. Oh, it stopped. Let's see what it does. Now my tripod is right down here. Is it going to try to hit my tripod? Or maybe get out of the way. Oh, is he gonna do it? Does he see the squirt gun? Does he see the toy? Oh, all the way around the toys. Okay, those tests seem to work pretty well. Let's try the plastic toy by itself. 
So that didn't survive. All right, now I changed it to the most conservative and we'll see if it can pick up this purple toy. Well, it didn't stop and pick up the purple toy. It's really low to the ground, but it also, the blades didn't hit it either. All right, now I have the toy sticking up out of the ground a little bit. Oh, it saw it that time and it'll go around. So I don't know what you think about the obstacle avoidance. I think it does a pretty good job. This is a small toy and you saw it saw it one time, but the second time it didn't see it. And when I put it up on edge, it did see it. Personally, my biggest test of the Luba 2 is the traversal from the base in the backyard to the front yard and back again. It has to pass over tree roots, a canopy of trees above, and through a tight pathway up a hill. I've been running lots of tests and I found that when I leave obstacle avoidance set at level three, it will work pretty much every time through this channel. However, if I switch to the most conservative level four, it actually does worse and stops at these ferns and then I have to go rescue it. So what happens when you lose satellite signal and you're actually mowing? Well, I ran an experiment and remotely disconnected the power to the RTK base station to simulate a loss of signal. Now, when the mower loses signal, it switches to the vision system and on the screen, you can see the distance it will keep traveling until it reaches a spot where it can get signal again. For the experiment in the front yard, this meant that it kept mowing back and forth for about five more minutes. And it was impressive that it still kept the straight lines even with the shadows in the bright sun. Something that I liked about the firmware updates is that the Luba 2 doesn't give up easily. In this situation, it would have normally stopped, but I like how it will be persistent now and turn slightly and keep trying until it is around the tall grass and keeps mowing. I mentioned mowing in the dark. The Luba 2 can definitely mow in the dark, but it isn't able to use the vision system. So in my case, it can't make the traversal from the front yard to the backyard. It stops and I have to go rescue it. So I only use the mower during the daylight and I don't have issues. The Luba 2 has all wheel drive, which means all four wheels have motors on them. The wheels in the front are Omni wheels. So I don't know if you can see these two, they spin this direction. So it enables it to go forward, but when it has to turn, it doesn't have a turning wheel like you would in a car. It just pushes to the side. And then these Omni wheels uh, work pretty well. I don't, I don't feel like it tears up the grass. It also has suspension. I don't know if you can see it here, there's springs. So it does a pretty good job at keeping level when it's going over bumps. Some other things physically about the mower, it's got a rain sensor. If it detects rain, it'll go back to the base. The back wheels have a good grip pattern that help it get up and down hills and not tear up the grass. It's got a spot for a SIM card in case you want to monitor it or control it outside of a Wi-Fi zone. But instead of a SIM card, you can use an AirTag for remote tracking and put it under the camera where there's a space for it and if someone does try to steal it they aren't going to be able to use the mower because it's locked to your account. I found battery life to be good but I don't have a large yard. I have the 5000 model and if I do a checkerboard pattern basically mowing each zone twice it's about 600 square meters or 0.15 of an acre and cutting all this takes the battery down to 21 percent. I've also had some fun with the Luba 2 making it run totally off of solar power with a 100 watt solar panel and a small battery and I've used the lawn printing feature to write a message in my yard. I had to use the smallest letters that they offer but you can size them much larger. I think they're going to add your own graphics in the future in addition to some letters and shapes that they have now. In the app, there's all kinds of settings like setting the mower height and no-go areas for each zone, whether you want a checkerboard pattern or not, what angle you'd like to cut at, and you can monitor its progress in real time, seeing the lines on the screen for what it has left to mow. You can also mow and drive it like an RC car when you're in Bluetooth range, and I heard that they're considering allowing you to drive it with a Wi-Fi connection, which would be cool because you could do things like look around your yard while you're on vacation. Of course, you can get firmware updates pretty easily. They fixed most of the problems I was having through the updates, though sometimes I do get weird errors in the app, but they don't seem to affect the mowing. So should you consider one? These mowers are very expensive, so you either need to value your time and add up how much it can save you, whether that might be one to three mowing seasons or the cost compared to hiring a lawn service. Bear in mind that the warranty is currently at two years. But if you want to have a very quiet, autonomous mower that you can send out to mow as much as you want for yourself or for others who may not be able to mow or hire a service, then that might change how you value it. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing. Post any questions down below.